Yeah, good day, you mob. Just thought I'd have a look around my shed at a few of the latest projects that I've got on the go at the moment. Anyway, uh, yeah, a friend of mine who works in the local scrapyard rang me up and said he found a piece of interesting electrical apparatus. And this is the device here. It's a large 240 volt variac. Well, basically, it's a combination of three variacs on the common shaft. And uh, when I got it, it seemed to be fairly intact. The only problem that I found at the time were that the carbon brushes had been damaged due to some rough handling it received when it was put into the scrap pile. But anyway, I had a few spare carbon brushes as used in old electric motors and I ground those down and fitted them. As a result I tested it and this very act seems to work really well. So yeah, it might come in handy for testing uh, electrical devices and things. It's a shiny made Warburton Frankie very act this one. Yeah, I've just made a few recent acquisitions to the Geiger counter collection. This is one I picked up off Flea Bay. It's a civil defence unit. CDV 700 Lionel Model 6B. And this is used in the Cold War times for, just for checking low levels of background radiation and food contamination uh, following a nuclear strike. It also has a headphone set that, that, that can be worn by the user. Uses a Geiger Mueller tube. This one, when I got it, had a faulty high tension power supply, which I repaired. And uh, I was glad it wasn't a probe, as the probes are fairly scarce and hard to come by and uh, fairly expensive. Okay, I'm just going to use this radioactive ore as a test source here. Just change the scale here. Now I've just put it up to a radium source I have. This is an old aircraft instrument that was uh, the, inch, the dial was painted with a radium paint and it's very active. Now, next up my instruments are a couple of survey meters, or dosimeters, I should say. Model 3007As, and a very similar type of instrument. Also using a external Geiger Mueller tube. And uh, try this one. Change the scale again. Here we go. Back to the radium source. Next 
next one here it's a it's a Ludham Instruments model 19 it's a survey meter this one uses a scintillator crystal as part of its detector which is built into the instrument Just get a, like a background reading check here. And if I approach for radio, radium source, as I get closer, it's going to go right off. Here we go. It's very sensitive. Yeah, another instrument, it's a Universal Survey Meter RD8. Now, here's an old instrument from the 1950s, Australian made. Now this instrument here was most likely used on the Australian soil during the British atomic bomb testing in, in the Australian desert at places called Maralinga and Emu. It's where the British conducted quite a few nuclear weapons tests in the 1950s, I think it is. Yeah, right, this instrument here. This one's using old valve technology. There's a large glass Geiger Muller tube here. And it used several batteries, a low voltage filament battery and a probably a 100 volt high tension battery. I haven't tried to get this instrument going yet, but maybe one day we'll have a look at it and see if it's still usable or not. Here's another instrument here. This is a, another, it's a nuclear counter unit. Apparently I've been told it may have been also used at Maralinga during the bomb testing. Unfortunately the probe on this one is missing. Got your high voltage setting for the probe that you can adjust here. This uses Nixie tubes as a as a readout. Another old counter unit. This one uses Decatron tubes as the readouts. Let's turn the sound up. Yeah, this instrument has a few problems with electronics. Uh, glow transfers are not working very well, so it's probably a pass by problem or something like that going on. Here's another instrument using Nixie tubes. Also has a Geiger Muller tube in this one.
Yeah, and also one other thing I found when I was moving stuff around. And a very old banana. I don't know how long it's been lying on the workbench. Been there for some time and at some stage even the mice had a bit of a go at this one. I sort of burrowed in and had a bit of a feed inside this old banana. So I don't think I can even wake this one up with hot water. I'm not going to get much eating out of this one. So I think it's pretty well stuffed, eh, that one. This is probably what it should look like. Yeah, saw a good video by Aussie 50 on his linishing belt unit. This is one I've had for a number of years now. And I'll certainly recommend getting one if you certainly if you into metal fabrication mats that'll work. The most useful tool I've got I reckon. It's gets a fair bit of use and see it makes a lot of mess. So I probably need to get a vacuum cleaner unit just to clean all this mess up around here. So you, it's the only problem, you get a lot of swarf and dust and filings scattered around the place. And the circular sander part is really good too. You can just square jobs off if you, to save you, you know, cutting a bit of steel or something like that. And you want to you know, square it up. You've got your square set square here, slide up and down. Put that in there. Oh, no worries, you're more Thanks for watching, and uh, take care till next time. Get another video up in the near future. Catch you later.